Welcome to the AdSense Flippers podcast. Are you sick and tired of gurus who have plenty of ideas but are short on substance? Worried that ebook you bought for $17.95 won't bring you the personal and financial freedom you long for? Hey, you're not alone. Join thousands of others in their pursuit of niche profits without the bullshit. Straight from your hosts, Justin and Joe of AdSense Flippers. Welcome to episode 14 of the AdSense Flippers podcast. I'm your host, Justin Cook, and I've got with me my business partner extraordinaire, Joe Hot Money Magnati. What's up, buddy? What's up, everybody? I am pumped to be back. And I've got John the intern. John, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. Good to have you on the program. We've got a great episode lined up. Today, we're talking about monetizing free. Now, I know that doesn't sound exactly right, but we'll get into that a bit later. First, let's do some news and updates. First thing is we've got a new five-star iTunes reviews, buddy. Tell me about it, man. I love these things. All right, so we've got Chad from San Diego. Chad says, great podcast. Keep them coming. By following your advice, I've started generating a small income via AdSense sites. Thank you so much. The beer is on me whenever we meet. Thanks, Chad. You know, we had a buyer of one of our sites named Chad. I wonder if it's the same guy. I don't know. It could have been, buddy, but I will definitely take him up on the free beer offer. Sam McLight, man, please. Thank you. Yeah, talking about buying our sites, I'm really encouraged and excited that you know we sold our sites on the Buy Our Sites page quickly. It's amazing to me, Justin, how quickly these sites sell once we get them up. Yeah, I'm fired up. We just put a couple of more sites up there, 13 sites, and we got eight sold like within 24 hours or so. Yeah. Pretty cool, man. I just wish we had more sites available. I think we could do a lot better. <laughs> yeah, we're working on it. Yeah, absolutely. Next thing we've got is uh, nichesforcharity.com. This is a new project we're working on in association with Spencer from nichepursuits.com. Basically, the idea is we're going to pool some money together, we're gonna create niche sites individually, and we're gonna take the earnings, 100% of the earnings we make from those sites and give them to charities. Specifically, we're looking at charities here in Davao City, Philippines. In fact, we are going to be the charity, so we're gonna take the money we make, go buy blankets, mats that people can sleep on, shoes, and hand those out to people here locally. I'm really excited about this project. Yeah, it's gonna be really interesting to see how we mix together our expertise with a charity aspect. What I like too is the fact that kind of the internet marketing community has a bit of a black eye, right? It's always marketing this, selling me that. And if we can take that and turn it around a bit and actually do some good with the stuff that we're doing with the marketing tactics we apply, I think that really kind of helps our industry. It really helps us grow up a little bit. And I think it helps AdSense Flippers and Niche Pursuits do that a bit as well. So I got a bit of news on the TriBPO front. We're teaming up with someone who's experienced on the sales end and marketing end uh, to kind of bring in some more outsourcing deals. And we're perhaps looking at getting an outsourcing podcast out there. Not sure what we're gonna call it yet, but hopefully we'll come up with a catchy title. Yeah, I think it'll be fun, man. I really like doing the Ads and Slippers podcast. I think if we did an outsourcing podcast, it would do really well as well. And the thing I'm really excited about is we're gonna be talking about something that we know so well and we work with so passionately, right? I mean, this is something we do on a daily basis. So being able to do that in a podcast, I think would be fantastic. Really excited to get that started. Last bit of news we've got is the AdSense Flippers Guide. We've been working on this for a while now. John, the intern, has put some blood, sweat, and tears into it. And basically, he's been, he's got, it's mostly done. I mean, we're editing it now, we're going through it, but he's done a bunch of videos. I mean, we've got the process from A to Z. If you follow this, you can absolutely do what we do. So even if you don't do exactly what we do, there's some tips in there and some tricks I think that will be completely worthwhile. Now, we talked about this guide. I mean, you know, we could probably sell it for anywhere from 400 to 700 bucks, literally. Yeah, we could have a six-figure release. Six-figure release. Yeah, but we're talking about this, though. We can make quite a bit of money on this, but I think, ultimately, we get more value by making it free. Right? Yeah, and I hate charging for information. You know that, Justin. So I think this fits right up the alley of giving it away and pushing more people to AdSense Flippers. Well, let me ask you, buddy. Why do you hate charging for information? Why is that a problem? Isn't that a viable business model? It is. But I think that, you know, the information, duplicating information doesn't cost you any money. And therefore, anything that you can duplicate for free, you should find a different way to monetize that. Yeah, but you're not some like hemp wearing kumbaya type of guy who says, oh, everything should be free, right? No, no, no. This is not an ethical approach or a moral approach. This is more of a business thing. Cool, man. Well, let's get right into this week's heart of the episode. The AdSense Flippers Podcast. So we have five main areas that we really want to approach monetizing free. The first is kind of like an introduction to free, what it means, what it is. Second would be advantages to free. Third would be disadvantages to free. The fourth section is how free can make you money. 
And the fifth point will go into our strategies and how we're applying it in our business. So right into the first section, the theory of free. Now, here's a book we really recommend that you read. It's Chris Anderson's book called Free, The Future of a Radical Price. And this is where we got a lot of ideas. It really kind of changed and helped like focus my scope on what we should do for different free models. Yeah, you know, I didn't actually read the book. I listened to the audiobook, and I think John is about a third of the way through the book right now. But some of it I already knew, and some of it was definitely eye-opening, and I could see how it applies directly to our business, especially things like the Jell-O incident or the Jell-O model. Apparently, when they invented Jell-O, not a lot of people bought it because they didn't know how to use it. So what the Jell-O company wound up doing was giving away recipe books so that people would learn how to cook and how to use Jell-O. I really like that. Very similar to what we're doing, right? We're creating niche sites, we're selling them, but we're giving away the information free on how to build them, how to monetize them, how to expand them, right? And so that's very similar, I think, and very applicable to our model. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of models that Chris Anderson discusses in the book. A number of them is the freemium model, right? Yeah, which is basically you offer a bunch of stuff for free that's of value that people will use and adopt and then have a higher level of service that's paid, right? Yeah, that's probably the most common one on the internet, the easiest one to think about. But then there's the three-party market. Yeah, which is all about like sponsored content. A good way to think about this is cell phones, right? You might get a cell phone for free and it's because you're paying a monthly subscription service. So they purchase the cell phone from the manufacturer, give that to you for free because they know they're going to make their money back on the monthly fee. Right. And then there's subsidies. Yeah, which is like the buy one, get one type deals. And most of us know that's not actually free. Yeah. And then there's the non-monetary market type stuff. Yeah, I think this is where it gets a little scary. So people are trying to put a monetization method to something that shouldn't be monetized. And that's where some ethical or moral concerns kick in. And we'll talk about that a bit later. But yeah, those are basically the four different areas. I think we should take a stand here and say that we don't have a moral, ethical, philosophical problem with charging for information. Yeah, kind of what we were talking about in the intro where, you know, we're not trying to be all kumbaya and hippie-ish about this approach. We don't think everything in life should be free. Ultimately, it's a marketing or business decision, right? What brings about the most values? What industries or what areas can we shake things up by offering things for free? I think that is interesting and not the, you know, oh, it should be free or any kind of, you know, issue there. Yeah, I mean, look at our business model AdSense Flippers. We are ruthlessly leveraging free and we're using that to get people in the door to come to our site, read our stuff, and then hopefully buy our sites and return that to us. Yeah, I mean, it's not all about, you know, just, okay, we want to give the information away for free. It's a business. You know, we're in business to make money, and we're business people first, right? Right, and you know what? That could change in the future. I mean, if we realize that we have a better model by charging for stuff that we give away for free now, we would adapt and do that. The worst thing you can do, though, I think, is trick people into free, right? Or offer them something that's free and then have it not be or using fake transparency to get people to believe in you. Um, that's worse than not being transparent in the first place. So by not giving information away, not you know, by uh, uh, being fake about it. Give me an example of that. Well, I'm not gonna be calling people out on the show, man, but you know what I mean. The people that are like, oh yeah, I did this, or I made this much money, and you found out they made it working in a, a factory or something instead of actually online. Agreed, agreed. You know, it, it's tough. I know that people want to build reputation quickly, but the way to do that is to be truthful and honest, especially if you're going to be transparent. So getting into part two, let's talk about some of the advantages to free. Now, the first advantage I would say is that it's disruptive to established markets. I love this, right? If you can get into an established market that's charging a bunch of money that has huge margins and beat the crap out of them by offering something free and cut their margins down, that's fantastic. You're gonna be a market leader in no time. Yeah, I mean, Chris says this in his book, you can't compete with free. Yeah, no way, can't do it. So if someone is out there charging for bits, they're charging for things they shouldn't be charging for, you can knock them down, right? You can tear them up. Yeah, and the reason you can do that is because free bits have a very low cost of distribution, almost free. And when you're in the informational world, like we were talking about before, it doesn't cost you anything to duplicate that. You can go ahead and do that a thousand times. It costs you the same amount as the first time. Yeah, most info products have a really clean, easy distribution system. There are all different kinds of places that can help you do that. But basically, someone goes here, clicks on a button, maybe puts in some information, and can download. It doesn't cost you a dime, and you're out of the process completely. 
One of the other advantages I think is that you're trading short-term dollars for long-term exposure. So basically we've used it as a bit of an investment in our business. We could have started off from the get-go, right? Charging for information, right? We've got the business going. We don't particularly care. It's making us money either way. We can continue to sell on Flippa and we could have charged for information. We probably could have done you know, a WSO or something or charged $49 for this ebook download. But I think by not charging for that, we're able to build a much larger audience. By giving it all away for free, people dig that, right? Yeah, I 100% agree there, and I really like our approach a lot better. I think it has more long-term value. One of the other great things about free, I think, is that it's easy for industry leaders to give low-risk recommendations. So you have someone like Pat Flynn who might go, hey, check out AdSense Flippers, right? You can have ProBlogger allow you to do a guest post because you're not charging all this information and all this crazy stuff or you know, for the stuff that you're giving out. It's all free. So they can go there, check it out, and take a look. I say low risk because there is a bit of a time and investment involved. So if someone's gonna give, or give you a recommendation, they know that it's gonna take quite a bit of their readers, their listeners' time. So you do have to overcome that and you have to provide actual value, which we'll get into in a minute, but there is a bit of time involved and, and I think most high-level people understand that. Yeah, and I think they're gonna take the time to check it out, right? They're not just gonna offer, just because something is free, they're not gonna recommend it. But most people, when they hear about free, which brings us to the next point, they don't expect any support. So if you give any level of support, that's gonna go above and beyond people's normal expectations, which is great, right? Yeah, which is fantastic, definitely. Like if I'm using a service and I have questions about it or whatever, I wouldn't expect them to have customer service on the ready. I wouldn't expect them to you know, help me walk through it. But if they do that, I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. How can they even afford to do that? Or I'll see their paid services on the side and think it's really cool. Right, I mean, we do that with AdSense Flippers. We try to answer people's questions directly, either on the site or via email. So we're offering that support for free. Yeah, I'm on Twitter all the time. People ask me questions, kind of say, hi, what's up? You know, Facebook, fantastic way to get a hold of us and ask any questions you have. So I think that's a great way to kind of connect with people. And you know, we don't have to, we have a business to run, right? But I like to do it, it's interesting, and people like and respect that. The last point we'd like to talk about is, you know, free is like open source, it invites collaboration. It invites free improvement of the product. Someone could come to AdSense Flippers tomorrow and have a new point in the process which could improve our sites and offer to that for free because we've been offering all this information for free. Dude, I love that. So someone will come in the comments and they'll say, hey guys, love what you're doing, but check this out, right? Or we'll right. get an email from someone that goes, hey, I think you can improve your process by doing this, this, and this. And then we can use that on our sites. We can share that information with everyone else. It invites people to share, right? Because they're going, God, they're being so open with everything. You know, why don't I be open too? So it's more of a collaborative approach and I love that. You know, there are a lot of advantages to free, but there are some serious disadvantages too I think are important to cover. There's a psychological value in paying for something, right? Like if you pay for something, you tend to convince yourself that it was worth the money, that it was worthwhile, that your purchase was a good one. This is something we all do psychologically. We try to, after the fact, convince ourselves that it was valuable whether or not it isn't, or whether or not it is, right? So when you get something for free, you don't really have that psychological effect going on. You tend to might, you know, maybe think that it wasn't worthwhile. Yeah, I would also say you probably treat things a lot better that you pay for than you get for free, right? There's a small bit of it here though where if it's really good, now you're compared to those who aren't, right? So if you're offering something of true value, then you're compared to all that other crap that people looked at for free and it, they have a good thought in their mind about you. Another point here that's a disadvantage is you can't back out of free. I mean, this is one thing we gotta think about with the guide, right? We offer it for free, it's tough to go back later and start charging $47 for it. Well, the guide's done, man. That cat's out the bag. But there is some other stuff lined up in the future that we do need to consider, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some things that we, you know, I don't know, I mean, maybe we should charge for it, especially when you start talking about products or tools or things that have fairly high development costs on our end. I mean, we do wanna recoup those development costs. We wanna make sure that we're getting enough value out of offering it for free or that we get paid for that product or service long-term, right? You know, but then the other thing that you can't back out of free that should be mentioned is as a market, you can't back out of free. Once competitors start offering stuff for free, then everyone who's charging for it has to go down to free. Yeah, they're done, man, that's it. So it's not just you that you'd be concerned about, it's everybody. But here's the thing, if there's a way to take something free in a market, in a specific niche in a market, it's gonna happen. 
It's going to be you or it's going to be someone else, but someone is going to take that to free. So it might as well be you. And I love the disruptive nature of that where you can really step in and just own something like that. Take people down. That's so cool. Another thing you can't do is you can't give away crap. Because free crap won't work, right? right. We, I get this all the time. Like, we'll get people that ask, hey, can you review my WSO? It's on the Warrior Forum. It's where they you know, sell info products or whatever. Can you review my WSO? And I've done a few of these where I looked at them, but they were so crappy. It was just a huge waste of my time. And I was thinking to myself, you know, oh, my God, all these people that are going to download, pay for this, or maybe get it for free or give them an email address or something. Like, it's not even the money. It's the fact that you're gonna waste four hours of my time digging through this. And not only will people not really appreciate that or like it, they'll hate you for it. Right, I mean, there's just a whole stigma attached to free. Nothing of free has real value. That's what some people say. Well, it's a generational thing maybe, but that's what some people think. Yeah. And you have to overcome that. Yeah, you can't get something for nothing. Isn't that the rule? I've actually heard you mention this before, right? This is before you were reading the book and kind of got a feel for the ideas, but I mean, you don't get anything for free. You always got to watch out, right? You know, the tap your nose kind of thing. I know what's going on here. But if you start looking at some of the things that are out there, you realize you can get some value. You know, Google Apps, for example, it's free, and we use it a ton and get a ton of value out of that. And Google gets value back from us for that. Absolutely. Another problem with free or a potential problem with free is that you can't get affiliate sales, right? And one of the benefits of an affiliate sales team is that they're out there doing all the sales for you. They're bringing you the business. They're bringing you the dollars. If it's free, no one wants to be an affiliate for you. Yeah. If you have a distribution network that's loud enough and large enough, I guess it really doesn't matter. But if you do want to increase the viewership of something that you're giving away for free, you can't do it with affiliates. Yeah, you can't do it on your own. It has to be like extremely good, epic shit, right? And see, that's one of our problems. I'd like to mess with the affiliate stuff. I mean, I'd like to get some affiliates selling some products for us. Can't do that with free though, unfortunately. Yeah, and the last point here that we should bring up is balancing the freemium model. This is very interesting. I mean, you have to give away a product that's good enough to attract users to adapt it and to make it part of their regular things, that regular tools they use. But you don't want to give away too much in that they don't upgrade to the pro version because there's no reason to. Yeah, adoption's key though too. It's not that they just download it from you, but it's they have to use it on a regular basis. If they're not using it on a regular basis, they're not gonna find out about your paid offer. They're not gonna care enough you know, to wanna get involved, to take that next step, right? And if you're really good stuff behind a paywall, then why don't you just sell it anyway? You're not really giving it away for free. It's kind of silly. It's kind of a trick, right? So this next section is about how free can actually make you money. Now, free models are not new, right? People have been offering free for a long time. Specifically, John, you started a blog about riding a motorcycle to get a trip on your motorcycle, right? Yeah, totally. Like, I sort of fell into that whole trap. I mean, it was a cool blog. Like, it turned out to be a neat project. I met some interesting people. But I think the tendency is for people to look at this free model and and starting a blog or starting a business and giving away content and stuff for free and thinking that over time, if they just put out good content and write good articles and are consistent, that somehow in the future, it will just eventually turn into some some sort of money-making endeavor, right? And that never happened to me. I never even had an idea about how I was gonna monetize this blog. I just thought, well, if 8,000 people read it, I'll make some money, right? It doesn't work that way, right? Build it and they will come, Exactly, exactly. So I guess, you know, what I would ask you guys now is why is building an audience not enough? Why is writing good content and putting it out there not enough in and of itself? Well, it's important to remember which audience you're building for, right? So if you are building an audience around people that don't have any money, like backpackers, for example, that's probably not the kind of audience that's going to be able to be monetized, right? So you want to make sure that the audience you're starting off with is able to be monetized, that has some money, and that will have interest in what you're doing. So it's not just build it and they will come, but you have to build it so that the right people come. Yeah, and then I don't think you have to go after the money right to start off, but you should have some objective in mind about how you're going to make that money. I mean, unless it's just a for fun blog or, you know, something you're doing for your own personal use, no problem. But if you really are thinking about making this a career of some sort or making some extra money, you better have some idea how to monetize those eyeballs. Yeah, I'll give you an example. So like, you know, the lifestyle design community, people build blogs around lifestyle design, but a lot of times they're targeting kind of the backpacker community, the people that don't have a lot of money, right? A difference would be 
targeting like C-level execs that want to get out, right? They want out. They want an opportunity that will give them a chance to make passive income, a chance to do their traveling of the world, kind of the, you know, midlife crisis type people. I mean, the difference is you're targeting people that have money, that have experience. These are people that you probably want to talk to, right? The backpackers, I mean, they have a lot of experience they need to learn on their own about how to start a business, how to get a business up and running, whereas you wouldn't have that with these like, you know, mid-level execs or senior executives, right? So that's a better audience for you to target. Yeah, so you're basically saying that people need to think about who's gonna be reading their stuff and who's gonna be buying their products and you know enjoying their blog before they just start cranking out content, right? Yeah, I mean, if you start writing about knitting, for example, right, uh, make sure that you're talking about wealthier wives that stay at home and knit and maybe not grandmas living on Social Security. I mean, that's a silly example, but you know what I mean? Someone that has some money to buy something. Yeah, well, I mean, I think another great example to look after are any of the older established type industries that are charging for their products, right? Where you can kind of throw the services on their head by offering for free. Exactly. Booty Mashup is a great example of that, right? I mean, they can't charge for the songs because then they'd have to pay royalty fees. So under the fair use policy, they're using these songs and creating new songs out of them, but they encourage you to come to the concerts, which they charge for. Yeah, Booty Mashup, for anyone who doesn't know, it's basically where they take established songs, mix them together, and get around the fair use issue where they can put those songs together. But yeah, it's a good example. I mean, anywhere you can take something that is you know large, has high margins, and can now be done like electronically, you can destroy that, buddy. I love that. I think it's important to think about free bits and not free atoms, right? Now you can do free with products that actually be manufactured or created, but there's always gonna be some level of cost. You can get it down, man, overseas manufacturing, but it's not free. Right, right. right. The example that I was thinking of when we talked about this was free baseballs. Like, I don't know how you would make a company that could make free baseballs. Would there be a way to do it? I'm sure there is, but I can't think of one. Well, advertise on the baseballs. I mean, there's ways to go around it. Get the baseballs paid for elsewhere and get them for free, but it's not as easy. When you're talking about electronic stuff, now that is pretty easy. We were talking about this before the podcast we're thinking of examples of like you know I think areas where you could be disruptive think about like you know the Aweber MailChimp arena right I mean Aweber is charging for something that really can't cost a lot of money no yeah any of those kind of online services where you set up a website and you do the same thing over and over and over again I don't think that that costs a lot of money once it's been developed so why not find a way to offer that for free. If somebody did that, if somebody replicated their business but offered it for free through advertising or some other sort of list building opportunity, it would be amazing. But the thing is it can't be crappy, right? Deliver something good, deliver something Aweber quality that's free through advertising, I'd be all over it, man. It sounds like a really good idea. So this last section is about our strategies and how we implement free into our business to help make us more money. The first thing I think I would mention is that, you know, we've mentioned this a bit on like how we sell our sites on Flippa. The idea is to start at a dollar, no reserve, right? Get as many eyeballs on the auction as possible and you'll get best price. It's the same thing with AdSense Flippers. We know that if we're offering sites on our site, right, for sale, we get enough eyeballs coming to AdSense Flippers. Some of those people are gonna be building sites, some of them are not gonna wanna pay us a dime, but some of them are gonna have some money and some are gonna wanna skip the process of having to start a niche site and maybe not make it work from the start. They want something that's earning, they can expand, and they're able to buy from us. So get the eyeballs and we'll get the buyers. It was the auctions that convinced me that this whole model was worth it. So absolutely, if you can build the brand that can attract the eyeballs, you can sell them something that's worth it. Don't you feel a little silly now when we look back? I mean, we didn't do this with our outsourcing company, right? We were really kind of reserved. We said, you know, we'll just be a small piece of the pie, the outsourcing pie, and kind of like held back. I don't know if that was a smart move looking back. Yeah, well, I mean, you'd read the book free, but you said you really didn't think you believed it, right? Yeah, I wasn't sure. You know, it's like one of those things, ah, that sounds cool, but I don't know if it'd work in practice. Yeah, I mean, implementing strategies you read out of a book is always a lot tougher than just getting an A in the course, right? So now practice makes perfect, and maybe we'll move this into TriBPO as well. Yeah, I'd be stoked about that. I mean, I think getting the podcast going for the outsourcing is really interesting. Picking up a sales guy that can really kind of like push the, the brand forward there and really get us talking to the right people will help us our business out a lot, I think. So question though, what transpired that allowed you guys to feel like you could really start to take advantage of this model, right? 
So like, how did you get to the point where you felt like the risk wasn't so high and you were willing to try out kind of the freemium model as opposed to what you did with Try BPO? Well, you know, AdSense Flippers wasn't our main gig, right? That wasn't our main business. We were getting paid elsewhere. So it was really kind of a no risk situation. Right, so I'd say for anyone out there that has a job, they're getting paid, they've got nice steady income, you can be risky here, right? I mean, you can really put yourself out there and just try something different. And I think that's what we did with ads and slippers. We said, what the hell? We wanna try this out, we think it would work, let's give it a shot. Yeah, I have to say that that's a big part of the free strategy is, I wouldn't go out there, quit your job, and try to start a free blog tomorrow where you uh, are gonna eventually monetize it that may be a recipe for disaster. Try to do that in your free time and build it up so where you can kind of take it over after that money goes away. That's one of the cool things I think with our strategy is we've had so many doors open, right? Like some people it's because, oh, well, you've got a blog that's really popular, you get a lot of people that are reading your site, right? So you guys must be interesting and doing something good. So they kind of view it like, oh, well you've got traffic so now I'll talk to you. You've got other people that are like, wow, you're writing really interesting content, I like what you're saying, it's helping my business. So you get lots of different reasons people find it interesting, but what's really cool is that if you're open and like very transparent, people are more willing to reach out to you, right? And when you do reach out to others, if they get a chance to check out your stuff, they're like, wow, you know, these guys seem all right. So by putting ourselves out there, we're getting all kinds of opportunities, you know, being emailed, uh, meeting people in person, right? I love that about our business now. I love it. Yeah, if we had hid everything behind a paywall, we never would have been able to do that. Yeah, right? So yeah, if we had a membership site where we had to, you know, charge people, we might have, you know, 100 members, maybe a few, maybe several hundred members, but we wouldn't have met nearly as many people as we have and made as nearly as many connections as we have by putting it out there for free. You know, I would say with our strategy, it becomes a bit more difficult the more traffic we get, the more people that are reading or listening to our podcast right because you start to think about this and it's rough it's one of those tough things to mention but you start to get a little greedy right you start thinking oh wow we've got a lot of subscribers we got a lot of readers we could just start charging here or charging there really you start thinking a bit short term right you also start worrying about like losing your authority right so maybe I need to do this or that to you know make sure that I stay on top of our game it's a really you know, slippery slope. You have to be really careful there because at first you have nothing to lose, right? You're all about it. You put out all kinds of information. And then the more you have to lose, the more reserved you want to become. And I think that's something we struggle with and we always push to keep the information out there, keep giving quality information. I think that's really helping us. Yeah, I mean, we could sell the guide for around 400 bucks probably. And if we got 200 sales inside of 30 to 60 days, I mean, that's $80,000 in value. That's no joke, right? It's tough, dude. I mean, yeah, I'm like 80,000 bucks, man. I'd love 80 grand if we get that on a launch. But I mean, by offering for free, obviously we're gonna have affiliate links in there. We're gonna have some site sales. And then the connections and the business opportunities that we're going to bring in because of this guide being out there. I mean, people are gonna look at it and go, wow, these guys really figured it out A to Z. Done, right, done. What did we do that brought in these guys this last month that, you know, one group of the guys that we're talking about spending $100,000 with us. What did we do for free that brought in the other guy that was looking to invest like $50,000 in our business, right? I guarantee you the reason that, that door was open was because of something we put out there for free, right, that we didn't charge for. So I don't know how much money we would have made per charging for that, but it may, you know, that's $150,000 of potential right there. Will they go through? I don't know. But I guarantee you'll make more than $150,000 this year. Yeah, this is like a, it's a tough one for me, right? Because I've been putting this thing together. It took a couple weeks. And I remember asking you and Joe about it and you guys saying, yeah, you know, this thing could probably sell for a couple hundred bucks if we wanted to do that. And, and on my end, it's kind of like, well, why wouldn't we do that, right? We're going <laughs> to make a bunch of money. I created this thing. Like, that sounds really cool. But then you guys were like, well, you know, we kind of come at this from a different angle, right? Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. We could sell. We get a bunch of money for it up front. But that's, I mean, if we would have done that earlier, we would have only got a $5,000 worth of sales, right? We probably would have sold out earlier, as would you, right? So the idea is to take this all the way. Keep it going, right? Give free information. Give good information and valuable information. And don't charge for it and keep building your business. Look, there's a lot of people out there that build niche sites, that build micro niche empire. I mean, they're building a lot of sites. 
but nobody talks about it like we do. And that brings a lot of opportunity for us to go to the next level. Whereas those guys who are just private behind the scenes and don't market themselves at all will never get that opportunity. That's what we did with the outsourcing business, right? I mean, that's one of our things there is that we were the private behind the scenes guys is good, but that will never blow up. It never even has the opportunity to because the lack of connections, the lack of traffic, the lack of eyeballs, basically. So, you know, never say never, right? But, you know, our plan is to not launch into paid info products by themselves, to not do that route. And we'll continue doing what we're doing now, although we don't have any ethical, moral issues with it or anything. So there are a lot of people out there selling info products. That's great. I hope they don't take our free stuff and try to wrap that into a sold product. That's pretty crappy. But as long as we keep information out there, the people that are charging for crappy information, hopefully we can put those guys out of business. Yeah, I think we can. I'm very interested to see how popular this guide will be. All right, man, so that's it for the heart of this week's episode. Let's get right into the ninja marketing tips, tricks, and our plans for the future. The AdSense Flippers podcast continues. So Joe, you are up, man, for our first ninja marketing tip. Hit me, what's up, buddy? You know, I love this one, freeconferencecall.com. Had this call with these big wigs the other day, want to spend a lot of money with us, and we had a whole conference call with them for free. Yeah, I love the fact that it's disruptive, right? I mean, it's like the other paid conference things, you know, go to meeting. Yeah, <laughs> those things go to meeting, go to webinar. You know, those are all paid, but these guys are coming in and trying to take them out by being free. Yeah, you get up to six hours and 96 callers, which is a pretty long conference call and a lot of people to be on it for free. They offer recording for free all these little services and features for free where if somebody does upgrade to the pro version for certain aspects of it, that's how they make their money. So it is the freemium model. So the second Ninja Marketing tip comes from John the Intern. John, what do you got, man? We got FaceTime. So this is like this Skype version uh, or like the Skype kind of program for like iPhones and iPod touch devices. Probably not gonna be you know revolutionary for people who already have an iPhone. But if you don't, like what I've done is I have an iPod touch, right? And we have wireless internet here at the house. And I can essentially use this thing exactly like a phone. It calls home for free and the connection's way better than Skype. Like I've had some like business calls and some calls with clients on Skype that were like you miss every third word, right? Yeah. This is way more stable and it's free. So there you go. FaceTime buddy, free, I like free. I, we'll have to check that out. I don't know, I'm a big Skype user. Normally it works well for me, but you know our internet can be a bit sketchy here. So definitely something to check out. Yeah, this is more for like calling family and friends, right? Cause like not every client you're gonna wanna talk to or potential customers gonna have, you know, the service. So. Yeah. The last thing we wanna mention is our plan for the future. One of the things we're working on we put in our yearly planning was webinars. So we plan on getting a webinar going here in the not too distant future. We'll go over keyword research, we'll go over content. One of the things I love about webinars is that it's actually interactive, right? People are gonna ask us questions and get us like directly. So I'm really excited about that. We've done one internally inside the Dynamite Circle and it went really well. People were really happy with it. I'm excited to offer this to our readers and listeners. Yeah, I would like to hear how many people are interested in that. So if you are interested in a webinar done by Justin and Joe of the AdSense Flippers, leave your information in the comments. Yeah, we'd love to hear what you guys think. Again, no pitch fest. We're not selling anything. We just kind of want to go over the stuff so you can get a really clear idea working with us on exactly what it is that we do and how we do it. Yeah, maybe we'll do the webinar and the guide release at the same time. Maybe we will. <laughs> Well, that is it for episode 14 of the AdSense Flippers podcast. Really enjoyed having you. Thought it was a great episode. Make sure to hit us up on Twitter, at AdSense Flippers. I'm on there on a regular basis. You can chit chat. You can check out some of the stuff we're talking about, looking at, and doing. So until next time, guys, thank you. See everyone next week. Adios. You've been listening to the AdSense Flippers podcast with Justin and Joe. Be sure to hit up AdSenseFlippers.com for more. That's AdSenseFlippers.com. Thanks for listening.